first vlog we talked about becoming conscious and that's still been a problem for me this week. I was in the gym last night and I wasn't really thinking about my thoughts. I'm trying to be present in the moment and I noticed about halfway through my training and I just wasn't present. I wasn't in the moment. My mind was on other things and that's something I really need to rectify if I'm going to really excel in my climbing in future. So today I was reading up online on how to improve your focus and how to be more present in the moment and a lot of people recommend meditation. So as of tomorrow, I'm going to start trying to meditate 10 times each day and uh, we'll see how that goes as to whether or not it translates to any improvements in my focus and I'll keep you up to date on that one. So the book asks us to look at our motivations for climbing and it talks about how we grow up in this achievement based society, particularly in the West where we're judged on things like our performance at work and school, uh, the material possessions that we surround ourselves with and how we can fall into a trap of, of using those things uh, to determine our own self-worth and, and feed our own egos. Now in climbing, if we use climbing as a way to feed our own ego, constantly chasing grades and not satisfied unless we've clipped the chains on our latest and greatest project, then that can lead to uh, motivation issues when you, you know, hit a performance plateau and it can create kind of like a performance anxiety that in uh, ironically is counterproductive to actually performing well in the first place. Now, the Rock Warriors way suggests that a better way to look at things is kind of through this, this learning perspective and thinking about how climbing develops us on a mental and personal and physical level. So for me, uh, I definitely fall into that kind of achievement oriented trap. I have profiles on all of the performance tracking websites for climbing like 8A and the Crag. You know, I really look forward to getting home on a Sunday night so I can tick that send. And that could potentially cause problems for me. So one way I'm thinking that I'm going to try and tackle that issue is I bought this little book. I'm going to take it with me to the crag and after um, you know I get on routes I'm going to take notes not just about the, the struggles that I had and maybe the things that I was thinking about while I was on that route but also you know the positives that I took away from it that weren't uh, just hey I clipped the chains on 510x, 511x, 5 whatever uh, but also oh you know um, I managed to you know um, keep climbing without fear uh, 12 foot above the last clip and pull a crux move and that's a uh, personal development for me and I did that hey maybe I didn't clip the chains but my climbing improved today so I'm going to do that and I'll keep you up to date as the weeks progress with how that goes so the last part of the first chapter talks about power and this idea that power is like a limited resource that we have to apply to our climbing and that we all have these personality traits and kind of mental habits that use up that limited resource and if we can work on those things then we can free up that resource to apply to our climbing and uh, improve our climbing performance. So for the final part of this vlog, I'm going to look at some historic climbing footage and some climbing footage from Maple Canyon on the weekend and look at some of the mental habits and personality traits that I have that I could work on to improve my performance. The book talks about how your ego can get in the way and this climb is, is a great example of that. The footage comes from 12 months ago. It's a climb called Yertle the Turtle, a 512A at Rhymer's Ranch in Austin, Texas. At the time, I'd only climbed 511B, so I was trying to jump up and, and hit that 512 grade. My ego was getting in the way, and I spent a good probably six weekends or so just jumping on this route and trying to work like this one move that I kept falling on. Complete waste of energy and, and effort that I could have invested in routes that were closer to my abilities that I could have um, used to build out my mental game and, and my, my technique 
which probably would have led to me uh, progressing at a, at a much accelerated rate. I fixed that aspect of my climbing. I've, I've, I, I cut it back and I, I focused on building out my, my 5.11 pyramid, which I've done. Still haven't climbed 5.12a, but I feel like it's, it's kind of inevitably coming um, because I've, I've, I've built out that base now over the past 12 months since then. This next route comes from Maple Canyon in Utah from just over a week ago. It's a 5.11D called Zosta the Toaster. It's a four star rated uh, classic overhanging uh, jug haul uh, that, that runs for 90 feet. With this route, I want to talk about two principles from the book, from the first chapter that I, I noticed in my climbing here that, that took away from my power and probably led me to, to failing uh, just below the chains on what would have been my first onside on a 5.11D. So those two things are, are self-image and self-talk. Firstly, self-image, um, and the book talks about how that can affect your climbing. In this case, you know, I come from climbing in Austin, Texas, where for the most part, the climbs are 30 foot. They're, they're essentially, as some people say, bolted uh, boulder problems. I'm not used to this really kind of tall uh, climbing that requires a lot of power endurance. I'm coming from that background where 80% of my climbing experience is climbing on routes like that. The other thing is that up until this point, I, I'd only on sighted a 5.11a and I'd only actually red pointed one 5.11d, which was a 30 foot uh, essentially boulder problem. Now that, that's where my self-talk comes into play. So I'm on this route and I'm doing really well. Uh, I'm probably about three bolts from the top and, and I'm feeling really good. Uh, up until that stage, I'd really been focused on just executing the moves of the climb and getting higher and higher and higher. Um, but I was doing really well and, and I start to realize that I'm doing really well and I'm thinking, hey, you're going to on-site this. Like you're going to on-site 511D. And the adrenaline kicks in and I'm getting really excited about the prospect of, of on-siting 511D and, and I get distracted from the climbing and the adrenaline kicks in and, and it sucks all this energy out of me and my heart rate increases and, and I'm hanging there trying to rest and shake out and, and recover um, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, the self-talk is, you know, you, you don't climb 511D, you're not a 511D on-site climber. Subsequently, I, I try to keep climbing, I get, uh, I get to the last clip and I'm just completely pumped out. I, I hung on this kind of like um, giant bear hold of, of a hold for about um, 30 seconds, just struggling to try and recover. And, uh, and it, was, it was all gone. Uh, I tried to grab for uh, what I thought was a good hold, turned out to be uh, a bit smaller, and uh, I just, I fell. <laughs> So I think that's a, a good example of how my self-image and my self-talk like neg negatively impacted my climbing. I don't know how to change that necessarily, but I think being consciously aware of that is the first step in, in, um, in correcting it. All right, so that's it for this week and for the first chapter of The Rock Warrior's Way. Just to recap, we talked all about becoming conscious of uh, your inner dialogue and the thoughts that you're having while you're climbing and also about those mental habits that you have that could be detrimental to your climbing performance. Uh, now that we're aware of those things, we can start to work on them. Two things that I did that really helped were writing down all the thoughts that I was having while I was climbing and filming a lot of my climbing and, and analyzing that uh, after the fact. Next week, we'll get stuck into chapter two uh, there's some exciting things happening. I'm going to be putting on a heart rate monitor and a stethoscope so that we can put together some footage of me climbing uh, where you can listen to my breathing rate and how that changes as I, as I go through the route. I've already done a bit of uh, heart rate monitored climbing footage uh, which I uploaded to YouTube the other day and you can check out in the link below and at the end of the video. 
we're also going to be talking about my action face. So um, I tend to grimace when I'm concentrating on things. Friends of mine call that my action face and it's, uh, it's a real issue for me and something that I need to work on. So we'll get stuck into that next week. Hit subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.